It's six o'clock on Tuesday, the 1st of October, 2019. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to RTV Aura's English edition. My name is Alexandra, bringing you the only daily update of the local Albanian news translated into English. Hellenic police have provided more details about the international trafficking operation, which transported drugs from Albania to Greece and Turkey using high-speed boats. According to Hellenic authorities, the trafficking route began from the Vlora coastline with the intention to reach Turkey, passing through the territorial waters of Greece. The Greek anti-drug squad said cannabis originating in Albania would be exchanged for heroin that would then make its way to be back to be trafficked from Albania into the European Union. According to the Attica Security Director, Lieutenant General Petros Jeffrey, it was thanks to the excellent cooperation of the Attica Security Directorate and in particular of the Drug Prosecution Division of the relevant Coast Guard that the international network was destroyed, four members of the circuit were arrested and 1,172 kilograms of raw hemp was seized. The Greek anti-drug squad set an operation in motion on September 25 after learning of two speedboats attempted to transport the drugs to the Turkish coast. A large operation involving 10 SSLELKT patrol vessels, a helicopter and an ASLELKT aircraft, as well as two Frontex air vessels, was immediately organised by the Hellenic Coast Guard in the wider maritime area of the northeast Aegean. In the first phase of the operation, a traffic stop was attempted and a high-speed ve high vessel of three traffickers was stopped. Further, on September 29, the next phase of the operation took place when the second high-speed vessel was stopped. On September 30, police found the drugs on an uninhabited island. The Hellenic anti-drug operation comes as authorities in Greece and Albania hit another drug trafficking line, this time originating from Ecuador to Piraeus and then to Albania. This mobilisation had the initial effect of trapping and stopping a high-speed vessel and arresting three foreigners abroad. The Hellen Hellenic anti-drug operation comes as authorities in Greece and Albania hit another drug trafficking line, this time originating from Ecuador to Piraeus and then to Albania. The Serious Crimes Prosecution has extended the investigations against the former Chief Pr Prosecutor Adriatic Lala by a further two months. The reason for the prolonging of the investigation is stated as being that they are awaiting the arrival of letters. This is the third time that the prosecution is seeking to delay investigations. The investigations into Adriatic Lala began in March 2018 regarding accusations that he failed to declare large sums of money at the border as well as for abuse of office. On August 9, 2018, the Court of Appeal for Serious Crimes rejected the request of the former Chief Prosecutor to remove the preventative seizure. His assets were estimated to be valued at approximately 1 billion lek, and as of the 23rd of July 2018, they have been seized. Following his public calls to banks across the country to not fund private public partnership projects, the opposition leader, Lul Zimbasha, has materialised with an official letter to the banking system. Through the letter, Basha urges them not to take the risks of financing PPPs, which, according to him, launder funds derived from drugs and corruption. Basha cited both the Oricum Dukat and Milot Baldren roads as suspicious contracts. By considering the protection of public interest and the stability of the banking system in the country of great importance, the opposition believes it's reasonable to inform your bank over the quick destiny of these two projects that violate the public interest. We express full confidence that you will distance yourself from becoming a party to acts that prove to support corrupt projects that violate the public interest, declared Lulzimbasha. Emphasising that not every business engaged in the construction sector carries out illegal activity, the opposition leader, Lul Zimbasha, says some companies have received construction permits and public contracts at levels that are not justified, either by their experience or by the financial opportunities that they have. All of these measures will also be accompanied by other actions from tax and law enforcement authorities, such as revocation of permits or termination of contracts found to be fraudulent or in contrary to the law, said Basha. 
The head of the opposition went on to say that financing such projects aimed at laundering money for trafficking and corruption should not only be allowed should not only be allowed and also criminalise the persons or institutions that have cooperated in this regard. We expect your bank to apply the enhanced vigilance process to any transaction involving entities engaged in the above activities. In the letter signed by himself, the Democratic Party leader Lul Zimbasha also notes the opposition's repeated warnings that the banking sector is the most vulnerable to collusion between corrupt governments, with some companies using the construction sector to launder dirty money. Albania continues to remain a mostly cash-based economy. The Bank of Albania has raised concerns that our country is one of the last in the region and in Europe to move away from cash and focus more on the banking sector. According to the governor, this is a significant problem as it promotes informality. This is reflected in a high use of physical cash in the Albanian economy. There are empirical studies conducted by the Bank of Albania in collaboration with the World Bank, and it results that the use of cash in the economy beyond the attenuating effects of the Bank of Albania mechanisms to maintain price and financial stability and economic development, there is an additional specific cost of using cash as a means of payment that amounts to more than 1% of the GDP at the economy level. Moreover, the use of physical money can also be considered as a driver of informality in the country, said Gent Seiko. According to the data, in Albania, cash represents about 20% of the total money being circulated in Albania, while according to the European Bank, the money outside of banks in the Eurozone equates to only 9.2%. North Macedonia and Serbia also have lower cash use than Albania, with 7.4% and 6.8% respectively. Finance Minister Anila Denai stressed that the focus remains on the anti-informality sector, which will bring improvements through the fiscalisation process. The Ministry of Finance aims to reform the way we do business and bring more attention to an effective working style in respect to the tax administration. A little earlier when discussing objectives, I mentioned the element of reducing corruption, which is a permanent objective, said Denai. The statements were made during a meeting of the National Payment System Committee, organised by the Bank of Albania, aimed at boosting economic stability in the country. The financial culture of Albanian citizens also has an impact on the use of cash within the country, given that there is a lack of trust as well as understanding of the banking system. Today is the International Day for the Elderly, as designated back on the 14th of December 1990 by the United Nations General Assembly in the representation as a day of global respect for the elderly. During a conversation with the elderly, President Ilir Meta called for more attention, care, love and compassion for parents and grandparents. Furthermore, the President praised their experience as a valuable asset for the future of Albanian society. At a time when Albanian society is becoming more individualistic, President Ilir Meta has appealed for more care for the elderly, raising the example of Saint Mother Teresa, who inspired millions to love all as their family. Taking care of and paying attention to the challenges and problems facing the elderly is an obligation for our entire society, underlined President Meta. The President praised the experience of our parents and grandparents as a valuable asset and demanded more attention from state institutions. Our society, especially the younger generation, must not only learn from your experience, but must also, must also invest these experiences in educating the younger generation with the sense of work, honesty, responsibility and seriousness, but also maintaining and strengthening our national sentiment, expressed President Mehta. Control for medical equipment coming into Albania is set to be strengthened. The Ministry of Health has introduced a draft that provides for the registration of medical equipment in customs, preventing them from entering the market without registration. Minister Ogerta Manister Liu emphasised that for the first time, the law now stipulates the reimbursements for medical equipment. Noting that about 6,000 medical devices or groups of medical devices were registered in the country, the health minister stressed before the commission that measures would be taken against any subject who violates the law. 
And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening and be sure to join us again every Monday to Saturday at 6pm for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of RTV Aura News, thank you and good night.